Hi, welcome to another Power Blast podcast. So are you looking to have your best year ever? In this episode, I'm going to give you a roadmap for success. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Perry Tinsley here. Welcome to the Power Blast podcast, the power of possibility, passion, and purpose. Happy New Year to you. Here we are in 2019, and a lot of times people are setting goals, setting setting uh, intentions on how they want this year to be. I'm talking beyond the resolution stuff. I'm talking about you know just setting some goals and uh, applying some strategies that can help you reach those and achieve those. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to share a roadmap of what it is that I've been doing. Uh, Actually, I've been following this format for about eight years now. I think 2011 was the first time I, I did this. And some of the goals, you know, I've reached other ones. I'd have, I've had to tweak. Some I've abandoned. And, uh, you know, each year I just kind of reflect on what was accomplished. And I'm going to take you through that process today. And just, just to let you know, in the show notes, I'm going to put a link to a download, a PDF. It's from... Uh, from the author of The Compound Effect, his name is Darren Hardy. He used to be the publisher of Success Magazine. And I've been following his format for a long time. I really like the way it is. Hopefully, that will it will bring you some value. But I'm going to encourage you to go beyond. If, if, if you're wanting to achieve and, and accomplish some major things this year, at least one major thing, most people do, um, I... You know, I want to encourage you to write it down as opposed to just typing it um, and or just thinking about it. Okay, I, I think that happens for a lot of a lot of people. So let's uh, let's dig in. I mean, the the process it's it's a simple one. You know, first you you make a plan or you set some goals. Uh, if you decide not to make a plan or set goals, that's also making a plan, <laughs> uh, just not maybe a really good one. Um, the next one is you do or execute your plan, then you assess it, assess what you did in, re, in a review, measure the accomplishments, and then, you know, make whatever tweaks and, you know, tweaks and adjustments that you need to do. So the first thing I think is really important is to dig into your why uh, before you even start writing down goals. I know a lot of times people are like, hey, I want to do this goal and this goal and this goal, but you know what? You need to back off and, and, and think, why am I want to, uh, wanting to accomplish this? I think back to, uh, you know, we talk a lot about health and fitness here. I think about when I was at that tipping point. That's a couple podcasts ago that I that I recorded that one about the tipping point. But I was at that tipping point where I, w I just knew that the doctor was going to tell me I was in a pre-diabetic stage because I had seen what my habits were. Um, I knew that I was overweight and overwhelmed. And I knew that I was lacking energy. And I saw what was happening with my parents or not with my parents, but what was happening with uh, other members of my family. Uh, my dad had b battled uh, type two diabetes. And so I had a why to, to flip that around, to take control. I was looking for some risky uh, sorts of procedures, quick fixes that weren't going to step up and, and help me out. So um, that, that was one of my whys for my fitness. Another one later on, I started this little side business and my dog just happened to have gotten this disease that was we later discovered was incurable, but he had vet bills that were going into five figures uh, a few times uh, during his life. And I he became my why. I didn't want him to have to make that decision to um, you know put my dog to sleep. I wanted him around. And so I dug into that why. I'm like, if I can if I can build a side business that can help with some of these vet bills, um, he can be around for a lot longer. So when you, when you have a, a really deep why, and now now Hillary and I are are, are planning and envisioning envisioning <laughs> easy for me to say right um, our, our future and what retirement looks like or the next chapter so to speak not necessarily retirement. Um, you know we're, we're we're planning ahead for that. So we've got we've got a why that we're doing that. But I challenge you to think about you know what is your why because what. What the power of the why does, you may have heard it before, but it's going to get you through those grueling, mundane, intense tasks that are going to challenge you day to day. You know, you get this excitement and then long after that 
excitement as you know the novelty has worn off you've probably seen that right now many people are hitting the gym and then the novelty kind of wears off or they're getting sore or whatever and then they kind of just drift off of course they don't have that deep why of what they're wanting to accomplish to stay the course no matter what but when your why is strong enough you'll commit no matter what i think in last week's podcast i shared a story about um Two tribes, uh, one that lived in the mountains, one lived in the, the valley, and a, a baby was kidnapped by the tribe up in the mountains, and the people in the valley formed their strongest force and their strongest people and got them together, but they didn't know how to climb the mountains, navigate the paths, anything like that, so they didn't get that far, and they, they, they tried and tried, and then all of a sudden they saw this lady coming down from the mountain with her baby. And they're like, how did you do that? What was it? We only got this far. How, what was your secret? And she's like, it wasn't your baby. You know, it, the, the why was she wanted to get her baby back. Her why was a lot stronger than everybody else's. So you, you got to think that. So that's, uh, we, we sat back and said, what's our why? What, what's our main focus? And, and um, then looked at our year in review. And you may see some people are posting their year in review online and, um, in different places. I think it's really, really remarkable. And that's what we, we, we did. We kind of looked back, uh, opened up a, a photo album and opened up my planner from the past year just to jog my memory of what was accomplished this past year or what sort of things were, were fantastic. So I encourage you to do that. The sort of things uh, like what were the greatest accomplishments? What were the greatest lessons that you learned? Uh, any personal development that you uh, that you did? What was the best decisions that you made this past year? And who or what were your greatest influences? Even writing down, what are some things that I should do more of next year? And what are some things I should do less of this next year? And maybe what are some things that I should stop altogether? The next thing I did, you know, it might be, it might be easy to say, well, gosh, now that I've reflected, let's dig into the future year. But it's time to take stock of what where you're currently at and spend time in gratitude. And that's on that PDF, a great, great little uh, gratitude, uh, kind of a checklist sort of thing. But spend time in gratitude uh, for what you currently have. Uh, who are three amazing people in your life? Uh, what are three great things about your home and where you live? And what are some great things about what you do for work? And what are, what are some great, some unique talents that you have and skills that you have and maybe some gifts of knowledge that you've experienced and developed? I think a lot of times we don't give ourselves enough credit for some things that we've done and it's time to appreciate yourself and appreciate life and pre appreciate where you are um, because all the things you've done in the past have gotten to you where you're at and now where you're at, it's going to serve you to where you're wanting to go. And then the next thing is to do a life assessment. And this, this is pretty easy. I'm not going to read the questions to you. You can see those in the, in the PDF should you uh, choose to, uh, to, to download that. Um, and, and this is also in a book. Uh, you can go on Amazon, look up Darren Hardy, uh, and look for uh, Living Your Best Year Ever. He's got a workbook there. That's what I'm working from. But this PDF has served me for many, many years. I've just write, used a regular notebook. Um, is doing a life assessment and answering some of these questions about family and relationships, about your physical, uh, you know, your physical part of life, financial, business, lifestyle, mental, spiritual. And you go through and you answer some of these questions and then you, you give yourself a rating and, and, and number and you add it up and then you put uh, the, the grand total somewhere, it, it co coordinates on this uh, life assessment wheel. And then you can kind of look at and see a nice little visual of how balanced things are for you in life because it's not always all about health and fitness, although a lot of times people <laughs> will watch some of my posts and think, oh, that's all he ever thinks about. But no, I, I want life to be in balance, to be happy, to be fulfilling. And there are definite things that I need to work on that aren't necessarily um, in balance at the moment. It's getting there, but I, I can definitely see some standout places, the standout things. And then, um, then I'll take that and I broke this down. I, I took each category 
And then I wrote down three things that I'd really like to work on or accomplish in each of those categories. And I wrote them in a, like a positive statement. So let's take uh, physical, for example, uh, it might be, I will accomplish, I will complete three different fitness programs that help me stay, that push me out of my comfort zone uh, by the end of the year. And I'll put a little deadline in there. Uh, sometimes people put, I will be, uh, I will, I will reach the 150 pound benchmark by June 1st. You know, so I'm just putting some numbers out there. That's much more powerful than to say, I will lose weight or I will get in shape or I will get fit. Um, you're, you're putting some definition to it and you're stating it in a positive way. And after I've done three in each one, I kind of look at that big list and then I, I, I come up with the top 10 goals that I thought, man, all these top 10 would be, these would be my top 10 to, to, to if they all, all got accomplished, that would be really crazy. Awesome this year. And then I'll I kind of look, it, it doesn't have to be from every one of these categories. There might be all three from the lifestyle category and maybe nothing showed up for the financial part. You can decide what, what that is for you. And then putting it down into three banner goals, three, three, you know, three main goals that those are kind of the top ones, the push goals that you, that you're focusing on. So I've done that. Um, and you know, those are, those are, those are, you know, kind of our laser target. But then as we start to work from that, we kind of look at this bonus factor. It's kind of the process of who do you need to become to accomplish those things? So what do you need to, you know, what skills do you need to develop? Uh, what things do you need to expand on? Or what are some characteristics that you need to eliminate or behaviors or habits? Uh, what disciplines are, are needed to grow? Who do you need to, you know, what are some resources or people or courses or webinars that you need to tune into or even some books um, to, to achieve those? You know, maybe it's going and taking a class in college or signing up for, uh, you know, a master's program, or maybe it's um, just uh, g getting a book and, and applying some of those things. But, but you go down and you'll, you'll list those things and then kind of reverse engineer the year backwards to say, what do you need to accomplish each month in order to chip away at reaching those goals by the end of the year or whatever your target date was. So, um, and then, then there's a nice little, uh, checklist on, uh, being able to review this, you know, week by week basis and even daily of what you need to achieve and use that tracker to plan it and stay on course. Um, like I said, we're using this book called uh, Living Your Best Year Ever. It's right in front of me here. And I I know that, I can't re reiterate this enough here. I know it's really easy to just kind of have and think it. But when you ink it, amazing things can happen. You may have heard this story before. Um, back in 2009, I, goal setting was kind of hokey to me in a way. Um, I, you know, I had some goals and stuff like that, but I never really wrote them down. You know, I always thought, oh, I'll accomplish this. I'll do this. Um, but I, I wrote some goals down and I, and then I posted them and I, I kept them really simple in the spotlight. One of them was to go on three dates. Now, you may or may not know, um, I had lost my wife in a car crash back in 2003. So to even date, get on the dating scene again was totally no way. Uh -uh. But I, you know, for whatever reason, it popped in my head, go on three dates. What can it hurt? You know, if anything, I can make a great friend. And so I, you know, that was one of the things that by the end of the year, I want to go on three dates. Not a couple, you know, it was something that was always on the fridge, but not a couple of years or weeks later, I'm chatting with this amazing lady uh, through email who had some questions about P90X, but we just started, you know, chatting and eventually, uh, you know, formed a great friendship and it, it did, it led to three dates. And uh, as you may have assumed, uh, it eventually led to us getting married and having many, many great adventures together. But it was with one of those things that just kind of, it blows me away when, when you write these things down, I think the universe starts conspiring in your behalf and saying, you know what, I'm going to work for you. And I know this is here. It's right in your, uh, right in your you know, eyesight every day. And 
there are other goals that I, I, you know, once that was happening, I'm like, you know what? I'm writing these things down and reviewing them all the time. You know, what are some other things that I want to accomplish? Does everything happen? No, but many of them have, uh, especially if they're important. When you've got a big why and a big reason, uh, it's it's going to be, be great. So um, my wish for you is for you to accomplish great things epic things this upcoming year. Um, and whether it's just to get in great shape or maybe it's improving relationships or living a healthy lifestyle or maybe reaching some financial goals or starting a business or improving your spiritual or in, and mental muscle, whatever that is, my wish for you is that you set a plan and you start chipping away to, to achieve that and, and following this roadmap to live your best year ever. When you start living a great year, those can add up and keep snowballing into other amazing things for your future. And it's going to start with you and start with getting it down. So I, I, I appreciate you for tuning in. If you found this helpful or beneficial, please pass this on. Uh, you can share it or you can just uh, copy the link and email it off to a friend. And if you can get over and uh, get over into the podcast um, in iTunes, or even your podcast app, you can uh, check out this podcast either in audio or video. You can share that as well. And if you give an honest rating and review, that would really rock because it helps reach more people. I so appreciate you. And thanks for tuning in. Let's let's rock this year, 2019. You can apply, these, apply this stuff any year. Just know that. Anyway, you absolutely rock, my friend. And remember, it's never too late. We'll see you next week.